Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Praise God. God bless everybody. Welcome. Please share the live, guys, with your friends. Tonight's going to be a very important word. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Share the live, guys, with your friends. We're going to uh, pray in here shortly to invite the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need agreement tonight. We need a move of God tonight. Amen. The Lord's going to break some demonic chains off of us, off of our hearts and minds. Amen. Like and share the live. Praise God. We're going to get started in a second here. Just waiting for a few more people to join us. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, my God. We thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, Father. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, guys, I want you all to agree with me in prayer and keep sharing the live. Amen. We want to invite the Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your precious Holy Spirit, my God. We invite you to move freely tonight, Father God, that you would touch our minds and hearts, my Lord, that you would reveal truth to us, my God. We bind up every demonic spirit, Father, every agent of Satan that would try to listen in to what we speak about tonight, that would try to bring confusion, distraction, or hindrance of any kind, Father, to stop a move of your spirit, Father. Lord, we ask that you bring everybody on this life tonight, Father, who needs to hear this word, Father, who's in bondage, my Lord, who's in deception, my Lord, or who, even who's operating in witchcraft that needs to get set free from witchcraft, Father God, that doesn't even realize it, Father. We ask, my God, that you would dispatch your warring angels, Father, to cover us, Lord, deliver us, heal us, and protect us, Lord, from all hurt, harm, and danger. We cancel any backlash, counterattack, and revenge of the enemy against us or anything that would concern us both now and in the future. And we decree and declare that nothing we share tonight will be used against us in any way, shape, or form. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we thank you and we praise you. Amen and amen. Praise God. We thank you, Lord. Praise God. Welcome, everybody, and God bless you. Please share the live. Continue to share the live. This is a very important word tonight. For the body of Christ, amen. Share this with all your friends and family, amen. This is a very important message tonight for the body of Christ, amen. We thank you, Lord. So tonight we're going to get into a word about uh, Christian, uh, Christian witches, okay? Christian witchcraft and Christian, wi Christian witches, excuse me. And I know that sounds like an oxymoron, and it is an oxymoron, okay? Uh, but the reason I'm coming out with this message tonight, the Lord had me come on here to teach about this, okay, is because there are so many witches now in the body of Christ deceiving people. And there are so many believers that are falling victim to these witches, okay, because of lack of discernment, lack of understanding, lack of relationship with God. And uh, Satan is strategically planting these witches and warlocks in the churches, okay, and because okay because they speak christianese uh they blend right in with us uh and and the church is in dire need okay of discernment and understanding so that we can be able to uh, spot these witches and warlocks and not fall victim to them okay and i want to repeat myself to say this they look just like us they talk just like us they sound like us they quote bible verses and they're sitting in the front pews of the churches they're prophesying they're teaching preaching they have titles positions offices okay and we're we're giving these people platforms and that's why this word is so important tonight because there are many even um well-intending believers okay who are supporting these witches um, because they they mean well and they think that these witches mean well too they think that you know these witches <laughs> who are prophesying uh, care about them because they're quoting Bible verses and they're covering their heads and you know you know doing all the whole biblical procedures and protocols and we very often get deceived by appearances okay and tonight the Holy Spirit is going to unlock us okay and our spiritual gifts and bring the body of christ discernment those who have ears to hear i know that this message may be 
uh, hard to swallow for some, it may even be offensive to some, but I want to, I want you all to resist the urge to leave this live tonight, okay? Because the Holy Spirit's going to bring exposure and He's going to open your eyes if that's what you desire of Him, amen, to show you what's actually happening in the Spirit so that when you go to church or when you get on somebody's live, you'll be able to discern this is a witch, okay? This is a witch. This is This person is not of God. And you stop giving these people your money, you stop tithing into their ministries, you stop take, listening to their teachings and allowing yourselves to be deceived because many of you don't realize this, is that these witches are on a mission to abort your destiny and kill you. And they will do it with a smile on their face too. They'll do it with a smile on their face. And so that's why this word is so important tonight, okay? So important. And we're going to start out by going to the book of Matthew, okay? Ma uh, book of Matthew, chapter 7. And we're going to read verses 7, uh, excuse me, verses 15 to 20. And uh, I don't know if Millie's on here tonight. But Millie, if you're on here, welcome and God bless you. Uh, and everybody else who's joining us for the first time tonight, welcome and God bless you. Please continue to share the live. Amen. We're going to get into a powerful word tonight. And the Holy Spirit's going to allow us to get discernment, understanding, insight. Amen. Praise God, Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20 from the New King James. It says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second to define the word ravenous, okay? The word ravenous means hungry, <laughs> hungry wolves, okay? Which means that they're out for blood. They're, they want to eat. They want to devour somebody, okay? Even the Bible says that the enemy walketh about like a lion seeking someone to devour. So when these false prophets, aka witches and warlocks, are coming in the church, they're coming looking for someone to eat, to devour, because they're hungry for flesh. They're bloodthirsty, okay? And many of us don't realize that. They think, well, oh, that's that brother's just an error. He just must quote a scripture. No, no, they are bloodthirsty, okay? Verse 16, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Okay? By their fruits you will know them. It's not by their, by their how good they can prophesy. It's not by how well they can quote Bible verses. It's not by how loud they can speak in tongues. Okay? Because all that stuff can be faked. All that stuff can be, um, you know, a counterfeit. Okay? All that stuff is nonsense. You will know them by their fruit, meaning, are they demonstrating the character of Christ? Are they leading people to repentance? Are they leading people to the heart of Jesus? Or are they leading people to themselves? Are they coming under false pretenses? Okay. Now, many people, listen to this, many people who are called to ministry, many people who are highly anointed, are going to be targeted by these witches. Okay. And so what they'll do is, they will come prophesying, and they're so good at doing this. They'll come bringing prophetic words and these uh, obscure prophecies as if God is showing them stuff all the time, okay? And if the Holy Spirit leads me to say some names tonight, I absolutely will, okay? Because I, I have no fear at all except for the Lord. I will call out some false prophets tonight if He tells me to. So listen very closely to what I'm telling you. Some of these witches will act like God is talking to them all day long and they will keep prophesying over you and if you will come underneath their spell because it's so seductive, the doctrine that they spew out, the nonsense that comes out of their mouths, these witches, and they quote Bible verses to do it. And so if you are a highly anointed individual, they will target you. They will target your ministry. And I'll give you an example of this. When I first started this ministry, okay, I have a deliverance ministry, okay? The Lord has given me deliverance ministry. And when I first started this ministry, I had a witch come in right from the jump, right from the gate, okay? This witch 
looked like the rest of us. She acted like the rest of us. She, you know, she spoke in tongues. She said, act like she was filled with the Holy Spirit. She was, she was signing up for deliverance sessions, doing the, everything the rest of us were doing. She looked like us. She sounded like us. She played the part so well. And at first, you know, I was moved with empathy because she, she was quoting Bible verses and telling me, you know, oh, I want, I want the Holy Spirit. I love Jesus. And they say, I mean, they even say Jesus is Lord. I'm telling you, that's how close Satan has produced these counterfeits because they will say Jesus is Lord. They will say Jesus, their Lord and Savior. They will say, I repent. They will do the, all that. They'll go through renunciations and everything, but it's, it's words, right? Even Jesus, God said that these people draw close to me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me, right? So people will say whatever they can to deceive. Now this witch used to come to our Bible studies and prayer meetings and she would sit in, in the group and I had my suspicions about this woman and the Lord was showing me stuff about her. Uh, and it finally got to a point where I already knew the Holy Spirit was telling me this, this woman is a witch, but I didn't want to call her out until I got one last confirmation. So now we're sitting in a, in a, in a prayer meeting together and everybody's sharing their prayer requests. And she waited until I shared my prayer request. Now everybody's in the, in the group praying, right? Everybody's praying and everybody's, you know, really in the spirit. And I'm, I have my eye on this woman because I already knew she was a witch. And so she waited until I shared my prayer request. And this woman, she, I mean, she was doing this. Let me tell you what this woman was doing. She was speaking in tongues and everything like this. She was doing all that, right? And as soon as I shared my prayer request, you know what that woman did? She turned around like the exorcist. Her neck spun around like this, like that, okay? Because she heard what, what, what my request was and she thought, that I was going to be stupid enough to give her some personal information. And her neck spun around like this, and she locked eyes with me to see if she could sabotage what I was asking for prayer for. And that woman stopped what she was doing to listen in. And I knew right then and there, I said, now I know that she's a witch for sure. Okay? And I told her I had her leave the ministry. Now these witches come to ministries, they come to churches, they're coming to TikTok, they're coming to, they're sitting in the front pew of the churches, they're on the platform and pulpits, they're doing all this to divide and conquer the body of Christ, okay? Divide and conquer, and they usually go for the head first. They usually go for the pastors and leadership, okay? So what they'll often do, the witches will come in, oh, so humble, oh, no, I'm here to serve. Oh, pastor, the Lord gave me a word for you. He told me I'm supposed to serve. And, and they'll go sit under the pastor and get real cozy with the leadership because they want a position of authority. They want to be trusted with position. And then many times, because a lot of these leaders have no discernment at all, right? They'll give them positions of power and or even they'll self-appoint themselves. I even heard of one, one of these witches out here. She, she appointed herself. She installed herself as an apostle. She had a whole installment service for herself. Isn't that funny? She invited people to the service too. And she anointed herself. <laughs> okay, this woman anointed herself to be an apostle and invited people to her service. Now that's how, that's the level of audacity that these witches are operating in. They are in church leadership, okay? And because the body of Christ doesn't have discerning ears, they are sitting underneath these, these people and they're under a spell, seduced by them. Oh, they give me a prophetic word. And these people bewitch you. They bewitch you, right? Yeah, they are jealous, right? And so what ends up happening, let me explain this to you. Let, let me give you an example of this. And, I, and I, Lord, I hope I'm not going to, let me not say anything incriminating tonight, Father. Back in the day, okay, and in in the days where I was not saved, I used to do a lot of foolish things, okay, a lot of criminal activities, right, when I was a kid. And I dealt with counterfeits, that's all I'll say, okay. And so... When I was dealing with counterfeits, I, I, and you know what, I repented of it, I, you know, I got deliverance already, so this was a long time ago, amen, the Lord set me free, amen, God bless you all and welcome. The Lord set me free from this, this was about 20 years ago when I was a teenager. And so I'm dealing with counterfeits, and I would take the counterfeits and exchange it for real, um, how can I say this, real products, okay? or money 
and I would give them the counterfeit and I would get the real thing. Okay? So this is how this works. People, these people come in with a counterfeit spirit. They give you the counterfeit spirit. They give you the counterfeit false word. And then they take your destiny. They'll exchange it for the real thing, which is your relationship with God, your ministry, your destiny. And we don't, we don't realize the exchange that's taking place because they look so close, okay? They look so close. Now, I even have this witch who lives across the street from me. And uh, this woman is always walking her dog. And every time I come across her, you know, she, she picks up her dog and runs away as fast as she can. I mean, it must be the angels of the Lord that's chasing her away. But nevertheless, this woman, you know, I finally got a chance to catch up with her. And I asked her, hey, do you believe in Jesus? And then she said, yes, I do. I said, really? She said, yeah. I, I said, is he your Lord and Savior? She said, oh, yeah, he is. Now, this woman is covered in dark tattoos. She wears dark clothing. She looks like a, like a definition of a witch, okay? Like a magazine cover of a witch. And, and I said, he's your Lord and Savior? She said, oh, yeah, and I go to church all the time. And I said, oh, do you believe in deliverance? Now, as soon as I mentioned deliverance, that witch took off running. She picked up her dog and she started running away from me as fast as she could because she knew that her demons were about to be exposed. And so these witches go to church. They will say Jesus is Lord. That's the thing because the people go to the scripture and they'll say, well, as long as they confess that confess Jesus is Lord. And that's another one. Hey, I don't even care. Listen, celestial, right? Okay. This woman is leading many people to hell. All right. This woman is leading many people to hell and they'll say, oh, but this woman led me to repentance. This woman uh, caused me to, to turn away from my sin. Now, let me, let me share this with you all. It was a Christian witch who led me to the Lord. Do you know that? A Christian witch led me to repentance. And you know how she did that? By scaring the bejesus out of me. By telling me if I didn't repent, I was going to burn in hell. So some people could do that. They could lead you to repentance by scaring the bejesus out of you. Yeah, and putting fear, fear mongering. But that's not the love of Christ. So the Bible says you will know them by their fruit. Okay? You will know them by their fruit. What kind of fruit is being produced in your life when you're underneath these prophets and leaders and these witches and warlocks? These witches will sit right next to you in the church pews, hug you and kiss you. Oh my goodness, I used to go to church with a witch and I had no idea all them years that I was sitting next to a witch because I didn't have the discernment at the time. And everybody called her the church mother. She was the church mother. Everybody hugged her and kissed her and she hugged everybody. Hey, come here, come over here, baby. Come over here, baby. Let me give you some love and some sugar. And she was a witch and none of us knew it. Isn't that funny? And the woman who led me to Jesus was a witch. Isn't that funny? Because God will use a donkey or a rock. So don't, don't measure that, okay? That's not enough evidence for me. That's not enough fruit for me. That's not enough. Because fear-mongering can also lead people to repentance. If you're scared enough, hey, you sure will repent. If those demons scare the bejesus out of you, you might turn around and repent. But you know what the Bible says? That it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It is with loving kindness that I have drawn you. It's not by scaring the daylights out of a person. Scaring constantly speaking death over people. That woman celestial is a psychopath. And anybody who listens to her is going to perish with her. Okay? That woman is a psychopath and she is bound up with demons. Jezebel. Okay? False prophecy. Yes, they're, oh, they got black eyes. Okay? Psychotic. They get delusions in their mind. They hear voices in their head. And because they have bitterness in their hearts, they're speaking death over people and they actually want people to die. This woman has a cult following, okay? She has a cult following, amen? There's so many other false prophets on here too who follow her, who they got their rags on their heads, okay? And listen, hey, I have nothing against that. You wanna prophesy? God bless you. May the Lord bless you, but stop speaking falsehood and stop saying that Jesus told you to say this because he did not tell you. A lot of them are out here speaking death over people. I heard one woman come up the other day. She looks like she was part of a Celestial's cult. And she came up in speaking in spells and incantations. And she was saying that the Lord gave her this prophetic word. 
for one of these great men of God, okay, for what's his name? I forget his name. Oh, I forget the guy's name. Nevertheless, he's a, he's a great man of God. And these witches, listen to this, what I'm telling you, they are strategically planted in the body of Christ to discredit leaders, to discredit and undermine leadership, to bring confusion to the body of Christ to bring double-mindedness to the body of Christ, so to lead you away from sound doctrine and lead you into their witchcraft. Yes, that's right, prophesying more than, that's one, than what's written in the Word. Okay, and they act like God is speaking to them something like a different doctrine, like they got their own connection with Jesus. Jesus told me something that's not in the Word of God because him and I are so close like that. Stop it, that's nonsense. This woman was speaking in spells and incantations, and I'll tell you how that sounds like. She was repeating a pattern of words, okay? She said, thus says the Lord for pastor such and such. And this man, he's a, he's a well-known pastor, and he's a man of God. And, and, I, and for me to say that, I've tested his spirit, okay? This woman came out, and she started speaking in a pattern and a rhythm of words, repetitive words. Like as if she was trying to rhyme words with her prophecy. And I called her right out. I said, you're, you're, you're operating in witchcraft. I said, you're speaking in spells and incantation. Call them out, okay? The Bible tells us to expose the false prophet. And the problem is that the body of Christ gets so offended when, other, when actual bold believers, okay, when the watchmen start sounding the trumpet, uh, start, start sounding the trumpet, they start telling us, be quiet. Don't, don't do that. Just preach the gospel. You're not supposed to be worrying about other people. But when they're deceiving the body of Christ, what are we supposed to do? Let them do it? We're supposed to expose demons, expose darkness and devils, because if we don't do it, then they will continue in their deception, luring in baby believers who don't know better. Okay? They don't know better because they don't know the Word of God. They don't have a real relationship with Christ. That's right. The enemy has infiltrated the, the American church. That's right. It's, now, come on, we're supposed to judge prophecies, but they want free movement. Come on, that's right. That's right. Judge everything. Test everything. Test what I'm saying. Go back to God and ask the Lord if this woman, what this woman is saying on TikTok, if what she's saying is true, Lord, reveal it to me. And many of us don't even know the voice of God. We don't know the voice of God, and that's why we're so deceived. God bless you, Millie. Thank you for those hearts. God bless you. Right? And so, and so this is a problem right here because we love prophets more than we love God. We, we listen to their word above what God says. So the prophetess Celestial and her cult following those psychopath women who have not been delivered from the spirit of Jezebel and want everyone dead, okay? We're, we're listening to them over what God's word says. And because Celestial says it must be true because she got a platform, right? That woman is a psychopath. I'm sorry to say it, I pray, that, I pray to Jesus that she repents. I pray that she gets delivered from that witchcraft spirit that's controlling her. But she has a big platform and all of us ought to be exposing that woman. All of us ought to be sounding the trumpet against her and every other false prophet out here. Because they are wolves in sheep's clothing. And I will remind you what the word says. Ravenous wolves, hungry wolves, bloodthirsty wolves who are looking for someone to devour. Okay, and we can't sit idly by because the Lord will hold us accountable. Why don't you warn them? Why don't you warn them? Right? Even the Lord says in the book of Ezekiel, if the watchman doesn't bring the warning, that God will hold the watchman accountable. We ought to be watchmen. Those of us who know better, who can see through the nonsense, okay, we should be sounding the trumpet. Call them out by name. If the Holy Spirit leads you to, then do it. Okay, I don't fear these witches. Listen to me here. When we know our authority in Christ and we have a relationship with, with Christ, we will not fear the witches and the warlocks. We will confront them. And I'm going to tell you something about these witches. What they greatly fear is a Holy Ghost filled believer. They want to, you know why they get up here with their prophecies every week? Like the Holy Spirit is talking to them day and night, nonstop. They can't stop giving prophecy. prophecy because they want the body of Christ to become dependent on them, as if they are God. Come to me, I'm the only one who hears from God. That's what they'll make you feel like. And then once you make them a crutch, you start to idolize them. Oh, prophetess, give me a word. Give me a word. I need to hear from God. And instead of you going to your Bible and studying, you go to the, the, the false prophet. 
It doesn't make any sense to me what the body of Christ is doing. And it's all because, we, because the body of Christ doesn't want to work. The body of Christ doesn't want to put their hands to the plow and work and actually study their Bibles. Okay, actually study their Bibles and, and listen to what God has to say. All right, listen to what the Holy Spirit will tell you when you actually press in. Holy Spirit, is what this woman saying is correct? Does it actually show up in scripture? Or is this person speaking out of their own wicked heart? Okay? Because Satan has strategically planted these witches in. And they're everywhere. He's strategically placed one. Everywhere you go, you turn around, there's a witch. So that's why I don't listen to TikTok prophets. I don't listen to no... Listen, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. I don't need to go looking on the internet for a prophet. Okay? These people out here, I had a sister in my, my ministry the other day tell me that some, one of the prophets on TikTok told her that she's going to get cancer. <laughs> Come on now. Are you kidding me? Enough is enough. Right? Let's look at Matthew. Okay? Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. Okay, this is the parable of the wheat and the tares. It says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Okay, while men slept, while men slept. Okay, but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, do you not sow good seed in your field? Did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us to then go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them up in bundles and to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, so the wheat and the tares. That's right, we've been sleeping. Come on, Rebecca. Come on. Could you pin that comment up, Anna Karina? We have been sleeping. The church has been under a slumber. And that's how these witches and warlocks have crept in unaware, okay, without our, without our knowledge. Because we're asleep, we're as under a slumber, we're under a spell, we're under witchcraft control because the believers are not praying, we're not fasting, we're not reading our Bibles, we're not spending time with God. We're giving ourselves over to these spirits. And that's how they're working their witchcraft against us. We're even sowing into them. We're praising them. We're giving them pulpits and platforms because it sounds, oh my goodness, this person, oh my goodness, is she talking about the dinosaurs coming back? The aliens coming back to get us? It sounds like mysterious. People are always looking for signs and wonders. What happened to just preaching the word of God? I mean, what happened to just reading God's word? <laughs> right? Where everybody's after forbidden knowledge. Forbidden knowledge. That's right, giving them information that we shouldn't. Come on, right? Stop chasing after forbidden knowledge. Stop pulling on prophets for words because I promise you this much. I promise you this much. If you go, go going around from prophet to prophet and asking for a word, Satan will definitely send you a warlock or a witch. He will definitely do it because he's, he looks at that Christian and he's like, that sucker right there. <laughs> Let me get him, because he knows that you've become vulnerable. He can, he can sow into you, okay? He can sow, okay? He can sow the tear with the wheat, okay? Because you are desperate. When you're desperate for a word from a prophet, Satan will give you one. And it's always lying, lies and deception. And I've seen people's life go, got lives go into shambles over this, okay? Even sowing into these false prophets' ministries, okay? Sowing into them. That can, that can create demonic covenants. I've seen people um, go, like, go into poverty because they've sown into false prophets. So what we have to do is come, up underneath, come out from underneath our slumber and really get ready to do the work ourselves. Stop looking for somebody else to do the work for you, okay? Let's read 1 John 4, chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, 
1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, and I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. Praise God. Welcome, my brother in Christ. Welcome. It's nice to see you. Amen. All right, it says, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. Okay? You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. <laughs> do you hear that? Do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. Oh my goodness, that woman celestial, she's always saying that the Spirit told her this, the Spirit told her that. I'm like, what Spirit told you? Jezebel or divination or python or <laughs> familiar spirit? Who, what spirit told you that? It says you must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. For they are, there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus came in a real body, that person has the spirit of God. But listen to this. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge, hey, listen to this, does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, oh my goodness, the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. Yep, that's right, Leviathan. Come on, that's right. Believe not every spirit. Amen. Okay, now what does this mean here? Hold on a second. Because some of them, like we mentioned earlier, some of them will tell you that Jesus is God because even the demons confess that Jesus is God. They, ha they, know, they know he's God. Of course they confess he's God. Remember when De uh, Jesus was going to cast the demons out of that man and they said, Son of God, what, what do we have to do with you, Son of God, right? They know he's God. So that's not enough. So what does it say? But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus. Now, what is the truth about Jesus? that he died for our sins, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved, that if we, con that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, right? So if we actually submit ourselves to him and obey him, turn away from our sin, he will forgive us. His blood was enough to atone for our sins and wickedness. That's the truth about Jesus. Now, this psychopathic woman over here, this Jezebelic woman, okay, she's telling everybody, you're going to die. Don't even bother repenting, she says, because you're just going to die. Don't repent. There is no grace and mercy because God wants you dead. That's what that woman says, okay? Now, does anybody on here think that that's the Spirit of God? Because are you trying to tell me that the blood of Jesus Christ is not enough to forgive somebody? Are you trying to tell me that there's a sin that's too great for God to forgive? That somebody couldn't repent and turn away from their evil way? She was trying to, she wanted Trump dead. You know that? She was prophesying that he was going to die. And then that uh, Kamala was going to win. And that, that prophecy failed. So now her and her cult followers are all praying that he would die. You understand what I'm telling you? The psychopathic nature of these people? death they just want everyone dead and you know who hates human beings so much that who wants everyone dead can somebody put in the chat who hates humanity and wants people to die and perish and not repent drop it in the chat if anybody knows the answer come on let me know who, who does that sound like to you who wants everyone to die and not repent hmm? who's the one who condemns us Who's the one who condemns us and stands before the throne of God accusing us day and night? Let, it, let me know. Drop it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Deep bitterness, that's right. Okay? Let me know what spirit she's speaking by. <laughs> that's right, the enemy. Okay? Satan, right? Satan hates humanity. Satan will stand there speaking through a woman like that. Not just her, but all the other ones who do it. Speaking death over people, okay? And they swear that God told them that. They swear, the Lord, Yah, Yah told me this. No, Yah did not tell you that, okay? Because if Yah told you that, then it would have come to pass, right? I'm tell and you know what's even crazier to me? Is the fact that God is exposing these witches and warlocks. And the body of Christ is still following them. Still following them, still supporting them, still upholding them still defending these these witches okay that's right the one who tried to tempt yeshua okay still supports them still goes to battle for them still will attack on their behalf you know what that's called a eunuch that's called a eunuch 
If you attack on some on behalf of another person because you held so fastly to that person, that's called blind loyalty. That means you're under a witchcraft spell. If, if anybody has blind loyalty, that's witchcraft. Because if you see something is off about a person and you say, I'm gonna look past all that, I see the falsehood, I see the witchcraft, I see the control, I see that they're lying, but I still am gonna hold fast to them because that's my prophet. That's, you're under a spell, okay? You're under a spell. If anybody hears me saying anything false, okay, intentionally, okay, not, not by mistake, I'm talking about intentionally, consistently, constantly teaching falsehood, don't follow me, unfollow me, okay? Don't listen to a word I got to say, amen? That's how serious I am, and that goes for everybody every minister of the gospel. I don't care how much you love them. I don't care how much you want to support them and see them win. Nobody, nobody should be held to that level, okay? That's worship of man. That's worship of man, okay? Blessings, brother Robert and, and Freddie. Welcome, brothers. God bless you. So at this point in time, okay, God is exposing the witches. And listen to this. I want to read this too. Because this, this really made me, this made me laugh when I read this. Because I said, God is so funny too. Because he will humiliate those people. He will humiliate those witches because they're trying to mock him and mock his name. Okay? They're trying to disgrace his name and he won't have it. Listen to this. I'm going to read this from Isaiah. Uh, this is chapter 44. Uh, chapter 44 verses 24 uh, through 26. It says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself. Listen to this. Who frustrates the signs of the babblers <laughs> and drives diviners mad, <laughs> who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness, who confirms the word of his servant, and performs the counsel of his messengers. Okay, now I'm going to stop. I won't read the rest of that scripture because it's not relevant to what I'm teaching. But this says, God will frustrate the babblers. He will t turn, drive them mad, okay? He'll turn them, their, their knowledge into foolishness, meaning he's gonna, he will make a fool of those, those diviners, okay? And on the, on the contrary, he will confirm the word of his servant, okay? and perform the counsel of his messengers. That means if anybody's speaking by the Spirit of God, he's not going to humiliate them. He's going to confirm what they said. He's going to carry out that word because he spoke it, right? Right? I, the Lord, have spoken it. I will do it. That's what God, that's what God does. He does, God is not confused. God does not have delusions in his mind. He's not bipolar. He doesn't speak one thing through one prophet and then another through another. It doesn't, you know what's funny? Around the time of the election too, there was a but. I mean, TikTok was swarming with those false prophets. And this one was coming out with a, a prophecy. Oh, on this date, Yah gave me this dream. And they would date it too, their prophets, their false prophecy. They have a date and everything. It's like they really want to prove that they're prophets, right? By dating their prophecies. And it was false anyway. On this date, God gave me this prophecy that Kamala's going to win. And then they'll give a whole vision. I saw her in the White House. And Yah told me that she's going to be the next president. And after this, this and that's going to happen. They have a whole story to tell, right? And there was a bunch of them storming TikTok. And then the contrary, then we hear Kim Clement prophesying years back that, that Trump was going to win. And so now all this confusion is coming to the body of Christ. And then the body of Christ is what? Is divided. That's what witches do. That's why Satan sends the witches to the body of Christ. To bring division, strife, anger, confusion. Okay? And, and also to smear God's name. To, to make God sound like, to try to make a fool or mockery of God's name to make a mockery of prophecy and also this, to discredit the real prophets. That's what, that's what the goal of these witches are, to come in with their babbling, their prophetic babbling, because that's exactly what it is, okay? Psychotic babblings, and they want to bring confusion so that when the real prophets speak, nobody wants to believe them because they've had such bad experiences, 
with the false ones. And then after her failed prophecy came, came out, she, came, she still came on, she still tried to defend her false prophecy. These people are relentless. They are relentless and they're ruthless. They don't quit, these witches. They don't quit. I'm trying to tell you. I was, I was certain that she would have quit after that failed prophecy. I said, man, she's going to definitely close down her platform now and stop deceiving the body of Christ. But she hasn't quit and she's not going to quit because the body of Christ is still supporting her. You understand what I'm telling you? It's confusion. It's witchcraft. It's division. It's enough is enough. We got to stop supporting these witches. Please, body of Christ, let's stop supporting these witches. Okay? Because these witches have no good intentions. They have no good intentions. And they will act like they love you. Oh my God, I heard one last night too. That this witch gave a prophetic word that that God was bringing everybody in under the fold of her, of her dress. This is a prophetic word, an utterance that this woman was given. That God gave her vision that all these people were being brought underneath the fold of her dress. Are you, tell, are you trying to tell me that God is, would speak like this? God doesn't speak perversely, okay? He doesn't speak foolishly. God speaks to us through His Word. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And one thing I will promise you is this, that the closer you get to the Lord and the more deliverance you get and the more you apply yourself to hear truth and receive wisdom and understanding, the more you will be able to see who these people are. The more you'll be able to see, to see who these people are. I even had a woman tell me that it wasn't until after she received deliverance that she was able to see in the spirit and have so much more discernment because when she was in bondage when she had demonic oppression she was believing these people okay that's right to deceive the elect if it were possible and how else would they deceive the elect unless they sounded exactly like the real thing quoting bible verses and doing all the biblical protocols and you know and pay attention too because many of these false prophets they have like that Hebrew Israelite spirit where they always quoting from the Old Testament and they never want to talk about the redemption and prize. They just want everyone to die. They can want to keep you under the bondage of law and death. No, no repentance. God's just going to kill everybody. That's, that's how you could identify that spirit. That's why the Bible says if they don't acknowledge the truth about Christ, okay, that the blood of Jesus has set us free. And also, listen to this. This is another key that I want to give you. The closer you get to Christ, the more the witches will manifest, okay? If anybody has a witch in their lives, I promise you one thing, that the more in tune with the Spirit of God you become, oh my goodness, the witches will be manifesting everywhere you go. Everywhere I go, I got somebody manifesting on me. And I'm like, oh my Father, what's happening? At first, I'm saying, Lord, Lord, is it me? I was even asking a sister that, <laughs> my sister that the other day, right? Was, is it me, Lord? How come everywhere I go that these witches are manifesting everywhere? But when you get close to the Lord, that spirit of God in you is going to cause their demons to expose themselves. Okay? They will expose themselves because they will have uncontrollable manifestation. They will not be able to hide in the presence of the Lord. And when you're filled with the Spirit of God, hear what I'm telling you, I, one of two things is going to happen. Either the scales are going to fall off your eyes and He's going to allow you to see who, who everyone is, okay? He's going to give you that sharp discernment to say something's off with this person. You even smell them. These witches have a smell on them too. Okay, I got a witch who lives up the street. She smells like death. Okay, that woman stinks because her demons stink. Demons smell, okay? And, and I tell you, you'll be able to identify them by smell. Okay, by sight, you'll, God will allow you to see the demons on them. He'll be, allow you to see the darkness in them. Or, oh, hearing, your ears will be so in tune with the Spirit of God that He'll tell you, this person is not speaking by my Spirit. Okay, and I'm going to read John chapter 10, verses 27 to 28. Listen to this. John chapter 10, verses 27 to 28. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So now, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, 
and they follow me. Now, when somebody's speaking with a rank spirit, which are with, with a witchcraft spirit, and they're speaking under divination, lies, deception, falsehood, control, Jezebel, you're going to say, this is not the voice of my good shepherd. This is a witch. And sometimes they know they're witches. Sometimes they don't know they're witches. Let me just put that out there so that, you know, you don't all think that these witches have cauldrons at home. Some of them do have cauldrons. Some of them come in with an assignment and they know what their assignment is. And then some of them come in with an assignment and they don't know what their assignment is, but Satan is still using them because they haven't received the deliverance and sanctification they need. Okay, but when you are in tune with the Spirit of God, hear what I'm telling you, and you pray in the Spirit, and you fast, and you're living a sanctified life, and you're reading your Bible for yourself, something's going to fail off to you. I don't care how good that, that witch prophesies. I don't care how good and how much of a counterfeit Satan produces. You will not be deceived by anybody, okay? It doesn't take me but two minutes to figure out who a person is, to see the, what spirits they're operating in. And that's not boasting on myself. It is the Holy Spirit who speaks to me and shows me because I actually want to know who people are. I inquire of the Lord. Lord, who is this person? And I used to be very naive. I used to think that everybody who goes to church is nice. Everybody who comes to church is a Christian. So I trusted everybody so freely, hugged everybody, let everybody kiss me and hug me and speak into my life and prophesy over me and lay hands on me. Now, you better stay over there. Stay over there and keep your prophetic word to yourself. Unless I tell you that you can speak to me and prophesy to me and touch me, don't touch me. <laughs> don't touch me. Because I don't trust these witches. I know what they do. They will do anything to get their hands on us as believers and because the, the body of Christ is weak, you know, not in, not anybody specific, but in, as a whole, the body of Christ has become mentally unstable, meaning any slight attack of the enemy, we run, we run. Oh, this is too hard for me, Lord. I didn't sign up for this. I'm going back to serve the devil now. Many of us run and we give up on the assignment that God has called us to because we don't have that tenacity and boldness that God has called us to have, okay? We're supposed to be militant in the spirit. We're supposed to confront evil. We're not supposed to shrink back anytime we see a witch. We're not supposed to shrink back when a witch sends us a, th sends us a threat. You think that the witches don't threaten people? I know, that, I know what they do. They use scare tactics. They use fear and intimidation and control. They even try to brainwash you to, think, to make you think that you know, that God doesn't love you anymore if you don't listen to the prophetic word. If you don't take this word, God's going to give up on you because you're being disobedient. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm, right? They'll say anything to get you. They'll say anything. They'll quote all the Bible verses. They'll speak in tongues. But when you, you are doing your job as a believer, standing on your wall, okay, being a watchman, okay, and being obedient to God's word, and not chasing after prophets, not chasing after man. Say, I don't care what man says. I don't care how anointed that person is. I don't care because everybody, man is futile. Hear what I'm telling you. Any one of us can be used by a demon at any time. Notice I say us, right? Human beings are susceptible to demonic influence. I don't care how anybody tells me that, oh, I've already been delivered in 1957. I don't care if you think that, because that's just in your own mind. That's a spirit of pride that's telling you that, okay? Every one of us are susceptible to demonic influence and human beings can get it wrong. And when I prophesy to someone, I tell them, go take this word back to God, right? Because, hey, I'm a human being, amen? I'm a human being. Man can get things wrong, and that's why the Bible tells us to test all the prophecies, right? Let, let one or two prophets speak and let the others judge. Oh, why would the Bible tell us to judge prophecies if, if all prophecies were supposed to be true? If all prophecy were supposed to be 100% accurate, then why did the Bible tell us to judge all prophecies? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> Come on now, listen to me. Hey, we got to trust in God. That's right. Come on, she said... Vicky said, I have ran now and I thank God for strength and discernment. That's right. That's exactly the truth, okay? When we, when we trust in the Lord and run to Him and make Him our strong tower, 
and the one that we trust in. I don't care what man is. Oh my goodness, I don't care how gifted you are. Listen to me. Hey, man is futile. Listen to me. Go to God and make Him the one that you lean on in all things and develop a prayer life because when you have a prayer life, His Holy Spirit will constantly be talking to you. I am in constant communion with God. Do I lock myself in a prayer closet for three hours at a time and say, oh, I'm going to have a, be religious and I won't get out of this prayer closet until three hours have passed. No, nope. no. I have constant communication with the Lord. From morning till night, I'm in communion with Him. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for waking me up, Father. Thank you. What do you have for me today? I thank you, Lord, that today is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in you, right? I make Him my priority all day. Constant conversation. I have fellowship with the Lord. He's my friend. I, people think that you've got to be in a, some closet somewhere to talk to God. I don't care. That's a religious demon that will tell you that. I have fun with the Lord. I laugh with the Lord. Me and him have inside jokes together. He's my friend. And when God is your friend, then you go back to this word. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That means you'll follow Jesus and not some witch. Because those witches will put a spell on you if they can. I promise you that much. And, and I'm going to share this dream, and, I, and this dream I had uh, at the beginning of this year, and I didn't feel led to share it until tonight because it's very powerful and it's very relevant for the body of Christ to hear, okay? And I asked the Lord if I could share it, uh, you know, when would be the right time if He wanted me, and I feel led to share it tonight. Now this dream, I went under... Um, <clears throat> I was under a demonic attack, right? It was around it was around St. Patrick's Day, or a few days before St. Patrick's Day, and so I, you know, some witch was trying to attack me as usual, <laughs> but uh, no no weapon formed against me will prosper, right? So this, this some witch was doing a spell on me or something. They were doing something to summon me, uh, and I end up in this diner. I'm, this is a dream. Uh, in this dream, I'm in this diner, and this was such a powerful dream. Uh, and this is why it's so important that we pray. Listen to this. Uh, I'm in this diner in this dream, and I'm walking out from the back of the diner towards the front of the diner, and I realized that there was some kind of St. Patrick's Day theme going on, and everybody in the diner was dressed like a witch. They were all witches. It was like maybe 30 or 40 witches in the place, and they were all dressed in like St. Patrick's Day costumes with the witches' hats. And so as soon as I saw that and I observed what was happening around me, I went immediately went into tongues. I started speaking in tongues, praying in the spirit, and I started binding everything up. I said, oh, heck no. And I started binding. I bind you witches up. And I started praying in the spirit. I started casting everything down. I started binding all the, the witchcraft up. And I was walking through the restaurant. And my goal was to get out of the diner. And I'm praying in the spirit. And suddenly I see the three witches from Hocus Pocus. It's like they were summoned from the dead and they came out of whatever chamber they were in and one at a time all three of the witches went to the back room because they were trying to summon a spell against me and I'm saying in my mind just keep praying in the spirit Susan just keep praying in the spirit until you get through the exit and I was trying to make my way out of the diner and I was right at the front door about to leave and then the, there was a witch standing at the front and she was a, a hostess the hostess and she she turned around she says to me she said, would you, like to, would you like one of the menus? We're, op we're offering a special, she said, like two, uh, two, two meals for $8.50 or something to that effect, okay? And, uh, and immediately I felt this strong, compelling force pulling me back into the diner, trying to get me to eat some of their food, right? And I'm telling myself, Susan, uh, I'm saying, Susan, leave the diner. And then I'm still feeling myself being pulled back in. And I'm now heading toward the buffet. And I'm standing over the buffet, and I knew that the witches wanted me to eat that food. And so I'm looking at the food, and then I heard, the, I heard a voice, which I know was the Holy Spirit. He said, don't eat this food, Susan. And so I said, okay, Lord, I won't eat the food. And then immediately, I started praying in tongues, and I said, Lord, I pray that you cover me in your blood. I pray that you cover me in your armor, cover me in your word. And I pray that this blood, your blood and this armor would to drive these witches mad. That diner was full of witches, at least 40 witches in the place. And when I said that, let this, this your blood and let this armor and let your word drive these witches mad, I said. 
and then I immediately went into tongues and I started praying in the spirit intensely like because this this strong compelling force was so strong on me to eat that food that if I didn't pray in the spirit I was gonna eat that food and I started fighting and warring and immediately this head witch comes out from the back the back office and she was the one who was in charge of this diner. She was the head witch in charge. She comes out screaming at the top of her lungs. She was a very tall, rank witch, okay? And she had this big black hat and her nose was bleeding, okay? Hear how powerful this is because this is the spirit of the living God, okay? Working through his children and giving us authority. Her nose was bleeding and she started shrieking. And she said, for God's sake, leave get out okay and she begged me to leave she was screaming for me to get out and her nose was bleeding because of the, t the tongues I was speaking in okay and then I didn't eat none of their food and I got up from that dream and I was shouting and praising Jesus and I said thank you father because God makes our hands to war okay they were trying to get me to eat that food. They were trying to bring me into their demonic covenant, but no weapon formed against me will prosper. That's the power of a praying Christian, okay? That's the power of a praying Christian. Now, do the witches try and the warlocks try? Of course they try. Who cares if they try? But we have to know who we are in Christ. When we know who we are in Christ, we can fight against their demonic powers. We have the word of God. We have the blood of Christ. Understand that. The blood of Jesus Christ has sanctified us, set us free, redeemed us. We don't have to listen to the witches and the warlock. We are not underneath their control unless we make ourselves slaves to them. Unless we come underneath their control. Unless we subject ourselves to them and we say, all right, I'll let you do what you want, witch. We rebuke these witches and I bind up every spirit of witchcraft right now that's listening in the mighty name of Yeshua. Father, I pray, my God, that your spirit would go forth and bring conviction to every witch and warlock, Father, who's operating, Lord God, as a wolf in the body of Christ to deceive your people. Father, we pray, my God, that you would bring repentance to the hearts of your people, Father. Those who have been in alignment with these witches and warlocks, who supported them, who, who came into alignment with their prophetic words, who, who, who cheered for them, clapped for them, shared their messages. Lord God, we pray that you speak to these witches and warlocks, Father, and allow them, my God, to see the error of their ways so that they, they too can be saved, my God. We know, Lord God, that even they are not too far gone, Father. You can redeem a witch, my Lord. And we pray for that, Father. We pray for redemption for your people. We pray for conviction. We pray, my God, for discernment, Father, even the gift of discerning of spirits, my God, so that your people be able to understand, my Lord, what spirit is operating in this person, that we would test all things, test every spirit, Father, to see if they are of God. Lord, so that we may not be deceived, my Lord, because we know that any one of us, Lord God, are susceptible to demonic influence and deception. We can be deceived, Father God. We are not beyond, Father, deception. We are not beyond, Lord God, uh, demonic influence. We can be deceived if we are not careful and watchful, Father. So help us to remain watchful and prayerful, Father, and to know who we are in you, Father God, to trust you, to submit ourselves to you. Lord God, to make you Lord over our lives and not man, Father. And we repent if we've made man an idol in our lives, if we put people as pedestals in our life and worship them and took in their word over your word, Father. Father. Father, forgive us, my Lord, for coming into agreement with witchcraft, my Lord, for sowing into witchcraft altars, my Lord, under the guise of ministry. Father God, please help us to be discerning in our friendships and in our covenants, Lord God, those who we take direction from, instruction from, mentorship from, Father, who we listen to. Father, we bind up every spirit of mind control and confusion. We bind up every witchcraft power, my Lord, that would try to work against your people. We plead your blood over this life right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. We pray against all demonic influence, all demonic interference, my God. And we just pray right now, my God, that you release your spirit upon your people, Father. Lord, that you would penetrate their hearts and minds and meet them in their area of need, Father. Whether they are brand new believers or seasoned believers, Father that we would all come to repentance, that we would live a sanctified life, Father, reading your word every single day, Father God, fasting and praying, Lord God, living in a posture of humility, Father, because you, Father God, you are the source of life, Lord. Your word says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. 
Help us to hear your voice. And we know that your voice speaks to us. Your Holy Spirit speaks to us through your word. Let us be lovers of the truth, my God. Let us be lovers of, the, of your word, Father God, which is the only truth we have in this world, Father God. Lord, I just thank you right now, my God, that anybody who has, Lord, been affected by these demonic prophecies or demonic influence or witchcraft powers, Father God, is being set free. Lord, that whom the Son sets free shall be free indeed. Yes, my God. Yes, let us have ears to hear and eyes to see, Father, and a heart to receive. And let us be teachable too, Father. We bind up that spirit of pride, Lord, that makes people unteachable. The spirit of rebellion, which is the sin of witchcraft. Father God, that causes us to rebel against godly authority and listen to demonic authority, Father. Father, help us, Lord God, to be able to submit ourselves to godly leaders, godly shepherds who really care for us, Lord God, who are looking after our best interests, Lord God, and to also separate ourselves from people who do not have our best interests at heart, Father. Lord, we repent of rebelling against your authority, rebelling against your word. For, Lord God, making ourselves idols in our lives, idolizing prophecy, Lord, idolizing prophets, Lord, chasing after people, Father God, to give us answers to our life problems instead of, Lord, do doing it the right way, which is, Lord, putting in work. Help us to not be lazy, Father. We rebuke that spirit of laziness and slackness, spiritual slackness, Father. We rebuke every spirit that makes us not want to serve you fully. That lukewarm spirit, Father God. Lord, that makes people easily defeated, Father. Every time we experience warfare, just want to quit. Every spirit of quitting easily because a witch tried to attack us or because they sent us a dream that we were afraid of. Father, let us be fearless because we have you, Lord God. Help us to remember whose we are, Father. Help us to remember whose we are, my Lord. We are yours, and you have made an open spectacle of every demon, witch, and warlock. And Father, even they know that, my God. Help us to know that. Help us to remember that, my God. We love you so much, my Lord, and we appreciate you, Lord. We magnify you. We put you above every demonic power and authority, Lord God. And if we've misplaced you, Father God, because we were looking at someone else, then, Father, help us to bring you back where you belong, Father, at the forefront of our hearts and our lives, Father. Help us to keep you first in all things and help us to seek first your kingdom and all your righteousness that all these other things may be added unto us. I pray for all those who are in ministry who have been attacked by witches and warlocks. Father, who have been impacted, even leaders who have been undermined by a witch or a warlock, Father. Lord, and, and if any of anybody on this live, Father God, is operating in witchcraft unknowingly, Father, because of lack of, the, of deliverance, oh, Father, I pray that you would deliver these people, Father, everybody who is affected, influenced operating in witchcraft father please bring forth deliverance as we repent father god everybody just repent from your hearts to the lord just begin to tell him that you repent of any sin you have in your hearts that he may bring forth deliverance father please have your way tonight father heal the bodies of your people heal the minds of your people lord bring provision lord to those who have been uh lord um robbed of their finances or wealth or even had destiny trades my god with one of these demonic people because of lack of knowledge father god we reverse all destiny trades father and we declare lord uh divine alignment coming to the body of christ my lord divine purpose my lord oh i pray that you would raise up an army father an end times army who would fearlessly stand against the enemy and all his wiles all his tactics all his minions father and not shrink back in the face of adversity, Father God. We love you so much, Father. We love you so much. You're so powerful, Lord. We love you, Father God. And we thank you for your precious atoning blood that forgives us, Lord God, that has redeemed us, Lord God, that has given us all that we would want or need in this life and, and, oh, and the life after this, my God. Thank you for eternal life, Lord God, that is only found in you. Father, it's not, a, it's not something we've earned. It's not something we can work for. It's freely given to us. Help us to remember that, Lord, that if anybody's being affected by religious spirits, Lord, works-based salvation, we rebuke that spirit too, Father. Trying to earn our way into, into your good graces or earn our way into heaven, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we ask, my God, that you would get that demonic works-based system out of our hearts and help us to be sons and daughters of the Most High God and help us to behave as such. Lord, 
that not only would we say that you're our Father, but we would actually behave like we are your children, my Lord. Oh, my Father, we love you so much that we would actually obey you, Lord. Your word says that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Father, help us to walk circumspectly, Father God, uprightly, with integrity, with love, with compassion. Help us to tell the truth in love. Help us to be bold in our declaration of who you are. Help us to be uncompromising and unwavering in our faith. Lord God, that we would tell people the truth because, Lord, people are up here perishing. Help us to not be cowardly, Lord God. We rebuke that spirit of cowardice, my God, that makes the body of Christ afraid to speak out against evil. Father, please put a boldness in your people, my God. Oh, we bind up that spirit of discouragement too, Father, and all health problems that are hindering your people. Help us to stand, Father God and stand in the liberty by which you made us free, Lord God, that we may not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I'm just gonna read from Ephesians chapter six. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Ephesians chapter six, and this is the armor of God. Oh, we thank you so much, Father. Ephesians chapter six, verses 10, and I'll read up to 18. This is from the New Living Translation. It says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against ru evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers of, in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still stand, still, excuse me, still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news. Yes, Lord, it is good news, Father. You are our good news. So that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Lord, help us to recall Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18 every single day. Lord God, that we understand that we're fighting against a real enemy, that is not a flesh and blood enemy, Father God, that spirit beings, Lord God, that are warring against our destinies, that are warring against our health, our wealth, our well-being, our family, Father, and help us to take our position in the kingdom. Help us to take up our authority and actually fight, Father. Lord, we rebuke that spirit of weak-minded, uh, Lord, Christianity, uh, watered-down Christianity that tells us that everything's going to be good all the time. It's not, Father. Lord, your word promised us one thing, that we will have trouble in this world, but take heart, be encouraged, because you have overcome the world, Father. We thank you, my God, that, Lord, your word says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. We thank you, my God, that even if we have trouble in this life, Father God, we're still going to serve you. We're not going to back down because the enemy's threatening us, Father. We will not be intimidated by these wicked powers. We will not be intimidated and we rebuke every spirit of intimidation and fear and every tactic of the enemy to make us, Lord, believe that you're not powerful enough to protect us because that's another lie of the enemy that will tell us that you are not sufficient to protect us or that you have jumped ship on us. You wouldn't send out your angels. That's why we're being attacked. Father, help us to also look internally to see what is inside of me? Where have I opened up a door to the enemy? Where am I allowing Satan to attack my life? Help us to self-examine every day, Lord God, to Lord come before you boldly, Father, and actually repent and confess our weaknesses, Lord God, instead of trying to come up with a beautiful script. Lord, help us to tell the truth when we speak to you, to come naked, Father, before you, because you see us anyway, no sense in hiding, right, Lord? <laughs> Come on, Father. Help us to tell the truth, my God, and to not be ashamed where we fall short. Help us to also not be ashamed to ask for help, 
to ask for prayer and deliverance and we rebuke that spirit of shame that comes with asking for help because the body of Christ is trying to shame people for asking for help. Father God, we're going to need your help until we go home to be with you, Lord. <laughs> we're never going to stop needing your help. And the second we stop needing your help, then we're no longer your sons and daughters. Let me just say that, Father, for anybody who needed to hear that. The second we stop needing God's help, we're no longer his children because then we're self-sufficient, right? We don't need a savior if we're already perfect. Come on. <laughs> right? It's not the healthy who need a doctor. It's the sick. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. He served us first so we can serve. Come on. Yes, Lord. We all do. Yes, God, send your deliverance. And Father, we're here and we're available, Father God. Help us to be available, Lord God. If a brother or sister is actually struggling and we can help them, help us to help. Help us to be available and serve. Help us to be faithful, Father God. Lord, and teachable and moldable, Lord God. And if we're gonna, if we are in, for those who are in a season of heavy warfare or affliction, help us to recall your goodness and recall the victories you've given us in the past that we may not become discouraged. Help us to keep our eyes on you because you never fail, Lord. You never lie. You're not a man that you should lie. You're so worthy to be praised and you're so sweet, my Lord. Your presence is so sweet, Father. Please comfort us, God, where we fall short. Hold us, Lord, through that process. Hold us, my God, in the areas of our weaknesses, Father. Even those who are struggling with loneliness and isolation, Father. We pray, my God, that you would bring fellowship and community to those who have none, Lord God. And I just release blessing over your people. I release peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray, God, that you sharpen all of our spiritual gifts. Give us discerning ears, eyes, senses, all of our prophetic senses being activated, Lord God. And this is, hey, also, this is not me giving anybody on here a gift. <laughs> This is me asking you, Lord God, to activate what you have already given them, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that we can't get from man what we get from you. So help us to stop chasing after people for what only you can give us, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that you bless your people. Bless them, raise them up, use them in a mighty way. And we just appreciate all that you've done tonight, Father. We seal every prayer that we pray tonight in your precious blood. We cancel any backlash, counterattack, or revenge of the enemy. And we decree and declare that we will sleep in peace tonight. And that revelation would come to us, Lord, in a powerful way. In a way we've never received it before, Father. We will hear you in dreams and visions. We will, Lord, as we read your word, we will read it like we've never read it, read it before. We will have understanding, Father God, when we read your word. Not just words on a page, but living revelation and knowledge that we apply to our lives. And we thank you and we praise you and we say amen and amen in Yeshua's mighty name. Hallelujah to the living God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. If the Lord has blessed you tonight, say thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Yeshua. Hallelujah to your name, Father. Thank you, Father God. We love you. You're so good, my God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name, Father. We love you. Yes, my God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Yeshua. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Yes, God. Yes, my Father. We worship you. We magnify you. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Thank you all for praying with us tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm just going to make a couple of quick announcements. And then I'm going to jump off of here, and I'll be back on next week. Um, let me say this before I talk about the books. If anybody is in need of ministry, okay? Yes, God. Glory. Yes, God. Glory to your name. If anybody's in need of ministry, okay, inner healing, deliverance, counseling, mentorship, you can click on the link in my bio, and I'll be happy to pray for you, okay? I'll be happy to help in any way I can. All right, amen? I encourage you guys to get the deliverance and the help that you need because the body of Christ is hurting and, um, and many people don't, don't know where to go in their lives, where to go from here. So some people are stuck in a season, a season of transition and they don't know where to go, okay? Because oh, some of us just need a little bit of deliverance, amen, and a little bit of counseling so we can be 
launched into our next season. Amen. That's right. We must follow Jesus. Praise God. All right. So you can click on my, oh, or even um, baptism. If anybody's in need of baptism, we do virtual baptisms as well. Amen. Let me just talk about my books quickly. So if anybody is in need of um, further understanding in the, in the realm of deliverance, okay? Want more understanding about the spirit realm. Want to learn more about deliverance ministry. Want to learn how to function in deliverance ministry. Administer deliverance on yourself or on others. This book, this is the expanded edition of this book. This just came out recently, okay? Uh, this book will teach you how to break generational curses, how to say prayers of repentance, how to identify demonic spirits. It has a full extensive de demon dictionary where you could learn the names of different demons. Uh, it has a full deliverance protocol so you could learn how to take yourself and others through deliverance. Okay, how to um, pray over your house to break any demonic powers and spirits and curses off your home. Uh, and also uh, teaches you how to maintain your deliverance. And then it has an extensive uh, chapter of deliverance, prophetic deliverance declarations where you can pray the scriptures over yourself, binding and loosing prayers, decreeing and declaring prayers, praying the, the scriptures over yourself prophetically so that you can walk in your freedom, walk in your deliverance. Some people just have trouble standing on God's word. Amen. This is this will be the book for you if you are looking to grow in deliverance ministry. I have this book, The Marks of a Prophet. For those of you who are prophetically gifted or prophets, called to be prophets, amen. This book right here will teach you about the spirit of Jezebel, how to identify that Jezebel spirit. Um, and those who are, you know, claimed to be prophets, just in general, how to identify that spirit, how to um, identify false prophets, uh, how to get the deliverance and healing you need as a prophet. Uh, it also teaches you how to, um, you know, uh, identify your dreams, how to understand the dreams and visions you're having, how to properly use your gifts and order, and so on and so forth. Um, and it also teaches you about, you know, teaching sound doctrine as a prophet and also uh, worship for those who love to, um, who learn, learn how to use your gifts for creativity, creative purposes. Um, this is also these both all three of these books are available on my website and on Amazon And then I have the healed whole restored book praise God God bless you but you want this book is the healed whole restored book This is um, for those who don't like reading too much who want to get right to the point This will teach you about healing uh, mental physical emotional healing um, And it will also give you the demonic aspect of it uh, how to how to heal biblically and be able to release any unforgiveness you have that may be causing sicknesses and so on and so forth. It's a quick read, about 60 pages long. And uh, the, all three of these books are uh, available in Kindle and on paperback as well. For anybody who feels led to support these books, for anybody who feels led to sow into the ministry, you can also do so on my website. Never any obligation, amen. But if anybody feels led to, thank you for anybody who does support this ministry. Amen. And uh, I think that's all I have for tonight for announcements. Uh, praise God. So I do want to let you all know that I get on here every Thursday evening at um, about around 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Praise God. Thank you, Millie. Amen. Praise God. 8 p.m. Eastern Time at uh, around 8.15, excuse me, on Thursdays, every Thursday. Amen. And I try to come on every week with a, with a word, a teaching, a biblical teaching. And then we usually do some prayers of deliverance and healing. For those who want to join us next week, I hope you guys come back. I want to thank everybody who sent gifts tonight. I apologize if I missed anybody who did send a gift. I want to um, give God the glory for um, Millie and Juan and Anna Karina for interceding tonight and praying with us. And everybody else who came to agreement tonight and prayed with us. Amen. I love you all and I look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday, 8 p.m. or 8.15 p.m. Excuse me, Eastern Standard Time. God bless you all and good night.